A few years ago, I picked up this book at a yard sale, Muscle Building by Earl Leiderman. This guy. On close inspection, I saw this book was nearly 100 years old. 100 years old. So it very much intrigued me by what were they doing back that long ago to get in shape, to get bigger muscles, to feel better. And another thing that caught me off guard was what the people look like inside of it. We're so used to big muscular stars like The Rock, Mark Wahlberg, that you know what a real person looks like that's not augmented is beyond us now. We're so enamored with their images of, of physical fitness. It was very interesting to me to see what pe real people looked like back then. And also, what were they doing to get in shape? What kind of exercises were they doing? What muscles did they think was important to work back then? How many sets, reps? Um, what movements were they doing? So we're gonna dive into this. We're gonna see what these people looked like. We're also gonna see how they were training. And at the end of this video, you're gonna get to see me perform or attempt to perform some of the crazy exercises inside here. So diving into this, some of the things that I noticed right off the bat was is his verbiage, the way he talks about some of the terms he uses. And one thing that stood out in the whole preface of this is he says, most people are lazy. They will not exert a sufficient amount of energy to the care and welfare of their bodies, which if left undone, will positively cause them to slip backward rather than go forward. Well, he's not wrong. This is the guy that wrote the book, Earl Linderman. And you can see he's a pretty jacked dude. If you walked into any gym in this day and time and you saw that guy, you'd be like, yeah, that dude lifts weights. but..." I wanna bring one thing up. Everybody that I show you in this were not taking anabolic steroids. These people were just, you know, weighing it. We're not on good old genetics and hard work, you know? And some of that hard work wasn't just weightlifting. It was actual physical labor that caused them to look this way. But if you notice, all of them, that's a, a very reachable thing that you could get. It's not the crazy phys super physiological physiques that you see in today's movie stars and, you know, Instagram models because they're not augmented. These are real people. This guy right here is Eugene Sandow. Eugene Sandow is, was the model for the trophy that they hand out, the Sandow, at Mr. Olympia contest. Mr. Olympia is the pinnacle of bodybuilding. So if you win a Mr. Olympia contest, they give you a Sandow. But this book is littered with a lot of guys that look kind of like this, you know? He's not, he's a big dude and I would not want to mess with that guy. Apparently he's some sort of boxer. This guy was a boxer. Jack Dempsey, you might have heard that name before. One thing I want to note is look at his hands. The way they're wrapped and everything, you know, that's not a very big guy, but I bet that dude could knock your lights out if he connected with you. The verbiage they use in here is, is really cool. Here's one of Eugene wearing a, a leaf there. Some of these people in here, and some of these exercises are insane. This is one of the neck exercises you're gonna see me trying later on. Stay tuned. And you're also gonna see me try this little back bender. And throughout this book, he gives you sets, reps, weights that you should use. And all of them are kind of on point for any kind of advice I would give my clients today. All these pictures I've showed you, they're not using any machines at all. There's some pictures of people with dumbbells and barbells throughout this book, but most of these exercises in here like this are on the edge of being dangerous for your body. Some of them look like they would be pretty hard on your tendon and gosh, you don't want to get whatever that is, like grabbing your back right there. And this is another one you'll see me trying later on using some sort of undetermined amount of weight for a forearm exercise. Notice the rounding of the back and the head, the, the posture, the way his legs are locked out. That's a no-no, we don't do that. Another great exercise. Notice the C-shape of the spine and the pulling of the head there. That's something else we don't do these days. But back then, they didn't know any better. They thought, hey, I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna pull my head real hard and try to get up. I love the old circus dumbbells. Wish I had some. Those guys probably didn't even know what that weighed and they were still using them, just picking up some, some weight. It looks like he wrote a few books on physical culture. And throughout the book, one of the things that he mentions a lot is not only seeing a, a, a great physical specimen and meeting the people that he had pictures of in this book, but also he noticed feeling their muscles and how robust and round and hard his, the muscles felt, which if you wrote that today in a lot of your stuff, that either someone would get offended or they would think that you were up to something. You probably would be. And I just bookmarked this because look at how jacked this guy is. This dude's got a like a 100 year old eight pack going on there. His waist is so tiny, it's insane. Anyway, 
This book has been a real fun book to go through. I've loved it. It, it it's great to reference what people were doing back then and it's still got some good solid information in it today that you could use so check it out now let's go to the gym and watch me do some stupid exercises so one of the first exercises I want to try is an exercise for the neck and that's uh one of the, he, he talks in here he talks at length about neck exercises in here and about it being one of the biggest physical uh, standouts for the physical culture there's two that we're gonna do. First one is we're gonna do this one that he's doing where he's just basically holding his head against his hand and pushing it back for reps, using it as a resistance. Cause you know, back then they didn't have, at none of this point is he talk about any kind of machine work. There's no cables, there's no machines. It's all like dumbbells or barbells as he calls them in here. And so this one is just my head against my hand and just pushing it back, which, you know, after a minute would kind of work. I guess. I mean, they got neck machines like this, you know. Mm, neck machines. They got neck machines. I've seen people do them. And then, but then the other crazy one, and that's not that big of a deal, you know, is this one. He talks about the wrestler's bridge. Well, that's why you. <laughs> that's why you need a strong neck. Yeah, I mean, well, so. Wait a minute! Whoa, 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 whoa! We're doing that one today. Yeah. No, you're I, doing that one I'm today. I'm gonna try that one. And the thing, and like. I've already, I've tried this already a Sorry, little bit. Let's just take a look at that pompadour. And uh, like that, that's hard, but I'm going to show you what that kind of looks like. Gonna, not My as hard as that gel in your hair. Okay. Oh, you know, he doesn't use gel. Make sure you don't use the word gel. All right. All right. So he's got a big flat and he's got like, I'm going to try to go up on my head. Ah, uh, I don't know. Whoa, wait a minute. He's got his arms crossed. No, 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 no. Go down. Go down. I don't think that's good for you. Like, it's, seriously, we whole, know that. Well, that's the whole thing, is that all of these exercises, they work the muscle that he says, but they're not that great on your back and your rotator cuffs and your tendons. And your joints. They're terrible. Your spine. Oh, but, you know, they didn't, they didn't know that much back then. And, you know, it, that probably, if you could get in that exercise, yeah, it's going to build your neck up a lot. That's crazy. So one of the other ones I want to show you is some abs. So here's the ab exercise. Oh. Exercise for the abdominals. Is it, you notice something there? That's him pulling his, and look, look at his spine. That's like a really natural shape right there. So he's got his legs <laughs> out straight and he's got his knees pulling the heck out of his head to crane up and do that. Oh. And in here it says, one of the finest exercises for the waist is to lie on the floor and come to a sitting posture while keeping the hands behind the head. The beginner may have to hook his feet under a dresser or a couch or other piece of furniture to hold his feet down. After a while, he will be able to do this exercise without any difficulty. No, he said furniture because- Or a tree root. He doesn't mention gyms at all. He mm -hmm. doesn't mention going to a gym at all. Like there's no mention of going to a facility that has machines or exercise equipment at all. It's all just like barbells, dumbbells, and furniture. So here's how that would look. My neck is gonna hurt so bad, fellas. Oh, I don't even know what's happening. So straight, and I'm supposed to crank my neck, and then I'm supposed to sit up. I would feels, That feels I, great. I just go ahead and put your feet up under it. I mean. Like I got, I'm hooking as much as I can. Oh, so healthy. Give me 100. Yeah, that sucks. That's yeah. why your neck needs to be as big as why, a tree. Why, why would you have them put their feet straight whenever you have more leverage putting your legs bent? Because like, we're not sissies. I think that's what it stems from. A lot of the exercise it stems from. We are men. Men, men, like manly men. I mean, manly like, men with forearms and oh, like Papa. Yeah, like Papa. Oh, I love Papa. Look at some. I mean, some of the stuff in here. If you look at some of the guys, like Mr. Eugene Sandow in here. That's whoa, a, that's whoa. A, Eugene Sandow is the dude, man. Can we? Um, I mentioned him earlier in the video. I need to get closer. No, that's just a loincloth. <gasps> oh that's my. just a rag. Like, I don't even see a is strap. Is that on Kindle? <laughs> like, the Did they put is, that in Kindle? <laughs> all right, next let's do the chest exercise, okay? Okay, what's going on here? So, he's doing a push-up. It talks a lot about push-ups, or I don't know, it's weird names for it, but this one stuck out, the one-arm push-up. This dude's got his feet up on a box and he's doing a one-arm push-up, talking about how excellent it is for the arms and shoulders and chest. I mean, that looks legit, though. That looks like I something mean, you would see. Uh, some, I it mean, looks like some calisthenics guy could probably do something like that. Do they have that. elastic, then? Those don't look very elastic -y. No, no, that's that's tweed and a belt. Oh, he's wearing a potato sack Like, get you a bum. chain and put around your chest. I don't know <gasps> what that a, is. I thought that was a tattoo. That's not a nipple ring. So. <laughs> 
I don't even know Nothing what's happening. This, but he's in a side plank and then he just goes down into. Go, 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 go. Push, 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 push. Use that forearm. Yeah. You should have ate your spinach. Like, that's a great free rotator cuff. It's just. You know, I'll say again, all this stuff is, is great exercises, but there's no beginner stuff on it. And I wouldn't recommend anybody to do it for your joints and your, your rotator cuffs and stuff. Again, the beginner stuff is sissy. The main exercise that he points out for your chest is push-ups. I mean, and to this day, it's highly underrated. Just push-ups are great. If you can't do anything, if you can't get to a gym, even if you're in a gym, do push-ups in your workout. At the end of your workout, to fry your chest or whatever, or your triceps, it's great. He talks about different hand position to affect your the back of your arm more. Uh. He talks about how you emphasize your tricep more to make your arms look bigger because it's the bigger upper arm exercise. Uh, he also mentions, oddly enough, in there a lot about feeling other people, having the opportunity to feel that man's muscles and how they felt. He points that out a lot in there, and like I think that's interesting. Yeah, you know, he he would, and it, you know, there's no weird homoerotic stuff about it. It may come off that way to, in today's PC standards, but he's just talking about how impressive the people's muscles are, you know, and how they how rock hard they felt. And by talks about respecting the work that they did on themselves is what he's doing by that. See, right. you made fun of me for years yeah. for doing that. So um, let me show you now. I'm going to show you the forearm and bicep exercises. Okay. Oh, let's do this. Splendid arms and how to have them. Talks about from the early schoolboy day, days, the arms seem to be one part of the body in which everyone takes pride. And that still hits home 100 years later. Dudes just want big arms. We all do. Everyone wants nice looking, toned, muscular arms. And uh, two of the exercises in here that stuck out the most to me, uh, number one being the juggler for your forearms, which oh, I'm about wow. to demonstrate. And the other one, which is basically like a preacher curl from that same position. And we're gonna do that real quick. So first thing we're gonna do is the, the preacher curl one that he's got, or the arm curl, is not performed like we normally would where you would hold two dumbbells and alternate from side to side or anything. He's got you down like this, and you got your other arm in front of you, and you just curl the weight up like this all hunkered over. And that feels pretty legit on my bicep, but that's kind of hard on my low back. <laughs> yeah, and he's more rounded than you are. Like you, you've got he's form. Really like, like I wouldn't even do, James, I'm serious. You'd pull your lower back out. <laughs> all of, my back's gonna be sore from trying to- Our livelihood, our livelihood. And okay. then the other one that, that's crazy is the juggler. And so this one, so next time you go to the gym, go pick up like a 20, 30, 40 pound dumbbell or even something cartoon heavy, you know, get something stupid heavy and then go to the juggler in front of somebody bench pressing and see what they do. So get over and the juggler is going to just roll it oh my. back and forth in your hand. And basically what you're doing is transferring it and curling your wrist up each time is what you're doing. So I think that's pretty cool though. Yeah, but you know, the stance he's got you in, again, is like, yeah, he's got, yeah, he's completely <laughs> rounded. He's killing your back the whole time. Yeah. But, you know, no weight belts. There wasn't any weight belts or anything like that back then. It's you don't just, think they had like leather weight belts? They had leather boxing gloves, right? The, there's a picture in there of a dude with a boxing. I'll put the, put it up on the screen here. Yeah. Of a boxer that he admired. And he's got his hand up. And it's not the traditional big gloves like you see today with all the protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a leather glove. And you can see there's some padding in there, but dude, I would Dude, that's what my hand looks like. If you got hit with that, it would probably hurt worse than an actual fist because yeah. it was so hard packed and it was all uh, like like thick leather and stuff. Yeah. That sucker would just be like pop when it oh. hit you. But that's the bicep exercises. And the next one we'll do is probably my favorite one. So let's get to it. Now we've got the bench pr the bent press. Hold bell at shoulder with right arm and place most of your weight on the left leg. Twist forward with your left side and then start the bend sideways. So you press as you bend sideways and... and Did they make elastic back then? Because I'm pretty sure... I don't know what that is. I don't even think they're... Uh, that's That looks like... <laughs> what's going on with the pants? It's like a potato sack. That's, that's what you catch. That's what you get out of that exercise. I, I, I touched the herniated disc that he's actually looking at his disc that popped out <laughs> in that there. It's in the stratosphere over there. That's what he's looking at. Like, I don't even know. So, you have to get muscles to keep your pants up. So, I'm back here behind. What? I don't even know how I'm to. Back here what my, is I'm, happening? I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm about to throw a Hadouken. I'm scared. Hadouken. I'm Hadouken. And then you're supposed to go. Oh. 
Oh my gosh. Did you just dab with the waves? <laughs> Did you just dab? dab. Da oh, wow. James, yeah. don't do that again, but that was kind of cool. Are we about like, to dab again? Hold on. Hold on. Dab. <laughs> what? That's actually legit. Maybe the people in the 20s were actually cooler than we thought. That Maybe, maybe That's not. That's a tough exercise, but again, it's How's your rotator cuff? My rotator cuff felt okay on that. It's all about, if you didn't have good shoulder flexibility, that would suck. But so what I'm hearing, at the end of your workout, you need to have your hair smashed, your rotator cuff torn, your back out of whack. Totally. And you are totally fit for the 20s. Yeah. You, that kind of makes sense. If you've got a herniated disc and, time a, in the 20s. and a rupture, but your neck's thick, you're great for the 20s. And your forearms. And your Adam's apple is uh, covered by all the muscles. They're talking about pie pie. The physical culture. Physical culture. culture. They know that exercise culture. wouldn't be bad if it didn't blow, wouldn't blow your back out because that's actually kind of cool. But it actually, looks, it actually felt like some kind of CrossFit exercise. I see a scheme going on. Then they had the snake oil that they sold everybody for their back problems. Sounds familiar. But you know, the thing is, is like if you this sold in the 20s and just the normal person got this, if the normal person got this that never did anything like this, they would kill themselves doing oh, yeah. this stuff and not be able to do it. So that's probably what ran a lot of people off. I mean, yeah. look, he's doing handstand push-ups as an exercise for the arm. I mean, granted, you still get on YouTube and stuff. You see that today. For beginner workouts. For beginner workouts. <laughs> you know, he's doing like a stomach vacuum there and stretching his back, calves. I mean, there, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. And the thing is, is... If you listen to what he, he talks about, the reps, his rep ranges, the exercises, and on different body parts, you can tell that he's very, very passionate about the physical culture that he says in here. And there's a lot of cool stuff in here. And if you're into weightlifting and you're into muscle and fitness, and if you, you know, just want to get some general knowledge about your body, it's a good read. It's quick and it's easy and it's also entertaining because it comes from an era where, you know, there wasn't a lot of, you know, PC out there. This the stuff he's saying is not wrong and it's not offensive. It's just you wouldn't want to say it today because it's kind of you know you'd be riding the line there. But you know it's a good, it's a great read. It's available on Amazon. You can get on Kindle for a few bucks. Uh, I definitely check it out sometime. And uh, thank you guys for watching.